everyone, welcome back to another slow fashion video. I hope you are all well. This week, a quick little video for you. How to buy clothes that you will actually wear. So talking a little bit more about prioritizing function over fashion, which I think maybe a lot of us don't do. And that's why we make purchases that we end up keeping in the back of our closets that never get worn. So I thought I would share with you my top three tips to make purchases that will actually work for you and your closet and your style. Um, and you know, maybe not necessarily work for some super aspirational Instagram photo. Turns out not all of us are Instagram influencers who can frolic in like sunflower fields in 18th century uh, inspired romantic dresses. At least that's not my reality. But I understand how easy it is to get caught up in aspirational clothing versus functional clothing that actually works for us. So let's jump in, but before we do, if you like this kind of content around slow fashion, around learning how to use what you already have and choosing creativity over consumption, uh, hit subscribe below. I'm also on Instagram. I will leave that on the screen here. I would love to see you. Let's jump on in. Especially as things open up again, we are being seen by, you know, other humans in 3D. Perhaps some of you are going back to work. Perhaps your body and life situation has changed over the past few years. The first thing I like to do before even contemplating shopping is to go into my closet and see what I already have. Chances are there are items that are at the back, hanging still with tags or pieces that I haven't used that I could probably reinvent and wear different ways if I just look at them with a little bit of a different lens. My entire channel is dedicated to doing this, so if you need a jumping off point, uh, I will leave one of the better playlists for you up here. But I also understand that our bodies have changed over the past little while, but your closet is still full of clues to help you make smarter decisions in the future. Look at the clothes that no longer serve you and figure out why that is. What part of your lifestyle is it that they don't suit? Are there materials or fabrics that you are just no longer comfortable in? And make sure you note these down so that you can avoid them in the future and not make purchases that you'll either have to return or that you just won't wear. Find new things to love about your body and learn about what silhouettes you like and why. It becomes a lot easier to ignore trends or marketing or influencer outfits that you see all over the internet that just don't work for you. And you'll be able to pinpoint what it is that you will actually wear and get use out of. You can get all of this information just by objectively looking at what's already hanging in your closet. I've done other videos on how to do this and then come up with a list for you. I also do this in my virtual styling sessions, so I will leave links to all of those things up here. I already touched on this a little bit earlier, but making sure that your closet is a true reflection of how you spend the most of your days is a huge way to make sure that you are actually filling gaps that will serve you in your closet. So for example, if you spend the majority of your days, say, working out and going to work, your closet should be a reflection of that. When you're able to prioritize those little lifestyle buckets and make sure that the clothes you're adding to your closet fill those gaps primarily, then your closet will be so much more satisfying and you'll get so much more wear out of it. And you'll be able to identify that as you're adding a piece, like does it serve the thing that I do almost every day. If you're worried about filling those once in a while gaps that still have a part in your life, things like rentals, shopping secondhand, and swapping with friends are a great way to fill those needs without having to put too much of a strain on the environment or on your wallet. Something that I struggled with for so long was buying clothes for a certain season. I live in a climate that has four very distinct seasons and specifically winter and summer are both like on either end of the spectrum, really, really hot and really, really cold. But for whatever reason, I thought that I could, you know, maybe manifest different climates through my closet and I just never wore them. So I think a really important piece is making sure that the seasonality of the clothing 
really matches your climate and the environment in which you live. A lot of times manufacturers don't match the type of fabric or the construction of a garment to its actual function so that they can cut corners. For example, using a lot of synthetic stretchy materials for little summer dresses when all you want are things that fit off the body and that breathe. So beyond just thinking about the climate that you live in, take an extra hard look at the garment that you want to add to your closet and make sure that its construction and fiber content makes sense for that climate and for how you want to wear it in that climate. These are all very broad ideas, but I do hope they provide a bit of a jumping off point when it comes time to add something to your closet. And I've also done a video where I go like way deeper into the series of questions that I ask myself before adding something to my closet. This is such a great way to pause and reflect before making a purchase and can help ensure that what you do add to your closet gets worn. That is what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, let me know if you have a certain trick or something that you like to think about before adding something to your closet. Pop it in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you learned something new, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I will be back with another slow fashion video. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao.